Hello, Rob. How are you doing? Hello. I've had a reshave, Joe. Have you? Well, yeah, I just took a little bit off. I, took, I just got Sally to make it a little bit neater. It looks very good. Yeah, Great I'm just trying to get a bit, bit neater, a bit neater. What's up with your nose? Um, I have got a great big, great big spot on my nose. It's been brewing for a few days. Cool, it looks massive. Mm, it does. Don't know what that's from. I've been doing a lot of building work, and I reckon I've been touching my nose. What? And it's made a spot. Dirty, isn't it? Dirty. Is it? A lot of digging. Pushing... Mm, right. and, I, and today, Rob, I've been doing what no man ever wants to do. Go on. IKEA furniture. You don't want to do uh, that. Right. I can't get it. We want. We need to go IKEA to get some furniture for this bedroom. But yeah. Obviously, we can't get there. Okay. I don't know where he's open. We got. Our, we ordered ours online. So. Ours came online. Maybe they'll deliver then. Maybe they'll deliver. We've just had the kitchen Cheers, delivered. Everyone. What have you got? I've got Elvis juice today. Brew dog Elvis juice. Grapefruit nice. infused IPA. Tremendous uh, beer that is. Beautiful. I've just gone for a Coke and yeah. Yeah, I've just gone for a Coke. Yeah. It's a bit boring. Coke. I've got four chocolate biscuits as well to eat. Have you? <laughs> yeah, if I get chance throughout uh, the duration so of our we've got a, we've got a guest today, haven't we? We've got a guest yeah. planned. A beautiful guest. Um, beautiful I've, guest. I've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I've got to be really careful because I can't upset this guest. <laughs> <laughs> I can't upset this guest There's one no bit. reason we don't upset anyone. No, we don't upset anybody. I tell you what, the Nathan Watson uh, I love podcast, Nathan, doesn't uh, they? That's gone down well, hasn't it? We talk about a heel turn. Nathan's gone from the baddest guy in Anglin who everyone hated to <laughs> the guy everyone wants to go for a pint with and yeah. go fishing with. Yeah, and, uh, and someone actually commented on the Matt Godfrey one. Um, it's like being sat in a pub with your mates, this, this thing. Yeah. And, and that's kind of exactly what we wanted. We wanted well, ultimately, really. that's, the ch- that's what we want, isn't it? But mm. obviously, we can't get out down a pub um, to do it. Yeah. But ultimately, if we get into a, into a pub somewhere and have a nice chat or sit in a really nice relaxed surroundings i think you probably get more out of people as well when we're yeah chat. probably but that, that is kind of you know the thing that we're going for in it and we yeah. like even before when we used to do the one at cheersby valley we used to sit and have a pint and an natter didn't we but yeah this is obviously the next next stage really getting guests on and that it's good Loving this is it. the next stage right so this thursday apparently there's going to be an announcement isn't there with is that measures measures to relax um not measures to relax everything because it might not be relaxed but measures is that the, what the next step? What's going to be the next step? Is that what that Jamie Cook, Ali Hamidi, and Martin Salt Alive was about last night? I think I think it's just a government thing. I think on Thursday they're probably having a, a little bit of a chat about it. Mm. I might be wrong, but that's what I've been seeing everywhere. That Thursdays they're going to just give us a bit of a recap and just say, "Get us on." Here he is. Oh my word! Now this is why I've got to be on my best behaviour because we've got the gaffer, <laughs> and if the gaffer <laughs> <laughs> disagrees with me, I'm gone. So right. I've got to be on my best behaviour. Dean Barlow, England feeder manager. How are you doing? Uh, very well, thanks. Uh, not too bad. Where's your right. daughter? Where's your daughter? Behaving herself? Well, I was going to stay in the kitchen, but the washing machine's on. Oh, no. Emily's doing some schooling. I'm just actually sitting in a temporary desk at minute, so she's gone upstairs to listen to some music. So. Is, is that a bit of bunting I can see there? Yeah, we've got some fun. <laughs> we're just absolutely bunting up. <laughs> <laughs> My temporary we've desk. Our, we've got bunting outside as well because obviously V Day on Sunday, yeah. something that we Belting. should all be celebrating. Do you know yes, what I mean? So, definitely. Yeah, we've got. Um, there'll be a few street parties right now. I think a lot of people are planning to get their stuff out on their drives and, and just a have a way. bit of a family celebration. Rocks. Setting up like a 12 foot rod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, if you're talking about makeshift desks, I've got a matrix platform with a bit of plasterboard on top. That's my desk. <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I thought you was actually sitting in a greenhouse looking behind. <laughs> no, this is my this is my youngest lad's new 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 bedroom, but obviously we can't get into the other bedroom, which is going to be an office yet. So yeah. we're all over the place. Obviously the builders can't come and do any work. Yeah. No. Not there. What's, um, what's the crack with you then, Dean, with work wise? Do you know, funny enough, all, all this morning I've been trying to sort it out. I mean, I'm a, I'm a site manager, so obviously uh, smaller building sites I, I look after, and I've been trying to sort of risk assessments, to out method statements, social distancing, and just trying to get everything sorted. It looks like we might be going back next week, but obviously everything is down to social distancing rules and sanitation oh it's it's an it's an absolute nightmare and obviously uh, 
being in charge of all that is it's quite serious stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, mega serious. Did you say when we had our chat yesterday that your missus has been poorly? Yes, she's been poorly. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's so she because we had Matt on the last video. He said his yeah. missus has been poorly. She yeah. she had um, coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, uh, she it don't sound much fun. No, it didn't, Rob. No, no, I'm being deadly serious now. I mean, anyone who's it. <sighs> It doesn't hit home until you see it for yourself. When you see one of your loved ones laying there in bed for six days, not speaking for three days, it's like, it ain't funny. No. It ain't funny. All the conspiracy theorists and all that, it ain't funny, mate. It's as simple as that. And the worrying thing is, we're, we're, uh, that was like two and a half weeks ago. She's like, fine now, back to form. It took her, she had it for a week. Uh, took another two weeks for her to, to get fit and healthy again. She's gone back to work, and luckily where she works, she can get a test. And uh, <clears throat> the test, she's just she had a test last night. It showed that she's had it, but she hasn't got the antibodies for it. So, which is another worrying thing, which means she can get it again because yeah. she only had a mild, she only had a mild. Well, okay. So, there's all these so-called experts out there, but... It's a load of rubbish. It's... it's it's just it's frightening it's frightening yeah. it really is it's, and having a, a six-year-old as well for a whole week telling them they can't go near their mom that that's that's difficult in itself that that was the hardest part you know yeah, yeah. of course i mean it's amazing and obviously we haven't got loads of loads of tests but it's amazing how advanced medical medicine is now to be able to get yeah. a test and yeah. to test that sort of thing <laughs> i think it's just amazing well, you can you can get a test on, on online. I know quite a few people who's in, in my position, uh, a site manager and things like that, that uh, nothing to do with fishing, just work colleagues who have had symptoms, but they've been asked by their employers to go back. And you can go and go and get a test. Yeah. You can you can drive you can drive and go and get a test. It's whether some people want to or not. Do you know what I mean? It, there's, there's, there's all unless you actually look at the facts. You know what I mean? You don't know what, what's happening. It's very, very easy to to listen to all the Facebook experts and oh, Facebook. You can't. And you can't do it. It's the worst thing, I, worst thing ever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think we've all got to be really cautious about it, really cautious, because it's invisible, and that's what's made people a little bit blasé about it, I think. Well, yeah, and I, I, I don't know. I think, I think if we all would be a little bit sensible, I think we can all come out of it better in the end, but there's no matter what it is, whether, whatever, whatever government it is, it doesn't matter if the red, blue, whatever they are, it, it this, there's always some people in society that will do the exact opposite. If the government at the minute telling us to stay indoors, some people are going out. And those are the same kind of people, in my opinion, that if the government told you, you need to go out for six hours a day, they'd lock themselves in the house all day. Mm. Yeah, people want something to fight against, don't they? That's that's the that's the sad truth. They want to fight you know, against it. But in my personal experience, and I've only my wife only had a mild, mild, mild case. It was scary. I mean, we, I I know three or four people, and I know you guys. And I'm not going to mention them that have been in serious trouble on respirators. No. It ain't funny. No, it's no. not funny whatsoever. No. But as the daily uh, programs say. Hopefully we've we've reached the the, the 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 top of the mountain and let's hope we can uh, get down it. Every day, every day gets better, and a few uh, a few sports uh, relax so we can all do what we what we love. You know, what I mean that's just going fishing and just I don't know, try and put a smile back on our face a little bit. Well, have so you had anything to do with the angling trust team with the fishing side of it? Uh, yeah, they they asked myself. I know they asked Steve, uh, Dave, Harrell, and all that, and it's. I know it's been very, very contentious and all that, but I'm a matchman. I've been a matchman since I was 11 years old. But I just can't comprehend that at this moment in time, the law states you are not allowed to have any gatherings at all, organised gatherings. No gatherings. Which is what a match uh, is. <laughs> which is what a match, a competition is, is, don't matter which way you look at it or what measures you put in place, they are banned by law. They're simple. And as soon the way the way I'm reading it and the way I see it is is hopefully in this it could come this Sunday where Boris turns up and says, Right, you're allowed to have small weddings, gathering of fifteen people. Well that's fine, you can have fifteen peg matches. 
it's not the angling trust or anybody who's put the head above the parapet we don't make the rules every single rule that they've put in has to go with government guidelines and that's why it's a phased approach so if the government changes their phases we've got something that can slot in at the same time it's all about the phases to be paid but the the thing is government makes all rules we don't make the rules no no, no. and I, I see people trying almost to fight against angling trust but that, that's pointless they're 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 our voice right and um, like you it know, or not. whether you like whether you like it whether you like it or not they are they are the only thing we've got and they have lobbied government uh where some of the sports aren't going to all, all you can do is is put your foot in the door yeah. Put your foot in the door. Make yourself known to the to the to the to the government. I mean, the, the government wants some good news. MPs want some good news, and the response that they've had back from some of the MPs uh, has been really, really good because they want to spread some good news to their constituents. And so look how how good they're going to look when they say, "Yeah, I've got you fishing." Blah yeah. blah blah. They're not yeah, going to yeah. say the angling trust, are they? They're MPs for God's sake. You know what I mean? But yeah, exactly. I, I just, I'm just trying to look at the positives of all of it. And at this moment in time, I'd just like to jump in my van with a few worms, a bit of bread, I'm just go and catch a few fish on the canal with my daughter. That's all yeah. I want to do. And yeah. then the rest will follow. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people want to do. It's just the odd one who seems to think that matches need to go ahead or they want matches to go ahead, but I, mean, I just can't see it, Dean. I can't see I'm it for absolutely, two or three I'm absolutely gutting myself. I can't, I've had to, this, this week, I've had like <laughs> reminders coming through about feeder masters and things like that. Some of them are so far away, I have to book a hotel. Everything's coming through, and I'm absolutely gutted. But is it worse losing fishing altogether because you, can, you, can, you want to fish a match? Is it yeah. really worth it? No. Definitely because that's not. what could happen if 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 you're seen to be uh, telling people, yeah, you can have mass gatherings against the law at this moment in time, the restrictive laws. What do you think? What do you think they're going to do? Fishing will be on the back burner for, for a long time. Yeah. Surely that's common sense. Because yeah. obviously, if you add something there that the government just are going to go, no, no we're not doing it. that. They're just going to the you'll whole be the thing back out. In the queue. You'll be yeah. at the back of the queue, and you won't see you won't see light today for a long time, but. As you know, the thing is, you've got. If you get your foot in the door, show them that you're responsible. You'll be the first. You'll be the first to like move along to the next phase. And one thing, the angling trust do not make laws. They do not make laws. They're not like it's the government that makes laws. And the fact of the matter is, the government says you cannot have gatherings because it's an organised gathering. And there's some people, and rightly say, that says, "Oh, what is a load of pleasure anglers?" It's not. It is a. It's not a gathering. Not an organized they're, all gathering indi- they're, all, it? they're all individuals. Yeah, they're yeah. all individuals. And I've seen. Look, look at what Clint's done with their win and what Nigel Larry done. It is absolutely brilliant. And I'm. They're showing some really good initiative. When the government say you can have gatherings, but like I say, Boris might on Sunday might say, "Well, yeah, you can. Uh, you can have uh, ten, twelve people at a wedding." Or even worse, which I think should happen, is funerals. You know, yeah. people can't. There's, there's well, a, there's I, went, I went to a funeral. There. I went to a funeral last week, Dean. You know the guy. I went to a funeral last yeah. week. Yeah. Um, there was half a dozen people allowed in, and then everyone else had to just stand outside in the doorway. Yeah. And there it, was it, there were there were probably seven hundred people, six hundred people at this funeral, lying in the oh, streets, really? then walked to the doorway, and then yeah. basically half a dozen people were allowed in. And everyone else had to wait outside. There's, there's, at the end of the day, there's a lot more important things than, than, than going fishing at this moment yeah, in time yeah. as well. Yeah. Because it's, we're, we're all hanging on tender hooks that the government gives some sports, like hers, like golf, like crown green bowls. And I have done a little bit of research. And to be fair, to be fair, you go on uh, some of the golfing forums and this people exactly the same. Why, <laughs> can't, have, yeah. why yeah. can't you have foursomes? Why can't you have this? Why can't you have that? I suppose it's human nature, isn't it? We, we, we just all want to want to do what we love. And me too. Like I say, I'm feeder masters, feeder masters super league. You know what I mean? All brilliant competitions. That, and you know what it's like, Rob. It, the buzz of team fishing and getting together is there, but common sense approach. The government says you can't. Simple as that. 
Yeah. If it, if it takes six months, you know, it takes six months. I can't, we, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if the government say you can't have gatherings for six months, guess what? You yeah. can't have any gatherings. Exactly. It doesn't matter how well they're, they're attended or what you do with your money or how you weigh in. If the government say you can't have gatherings, that is it. Yeah, exactly. So obviously, this is this is filtered through into like the international events as well, because obviously you're the England manager of the feeder team. Yeah, yeah. And all that's had a knock on as well, hasn't it? Of course. Yeah. Well, yes. Yesterday was it? There was a press release from uh, SIPS, which are the actual governing body above all of the uh, fishing uh, boards. Uh, there's quite a few, and it gets a bit confusing with FIPS M. FIPS said, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, they they cancelled the uh, the ladies world championships and mm -hmm. they cancelled the the uh, float fishing world championship for nations which is still the biggest competition and yeah that was in it, italy wasn't it it was in italy and from what i can gather it's the governments of them countries that yeah. actually uh have uh cancelled the the event like for us rob in uh, and that for france france yeah. closed all competitions down early yeah yeah so, so, I mean, there was no chance of that French one happening, was there? When, when no. you look back, there was no chance of it happening. Got, we were, no, we were traveling hoping, and, hoping and then it was just never going to happen because yeah. obviously July is way too early. Yeah, and it, the, the thing is, because this, this country's got certain levels at different times, you have to travel through these countries. And, and as well, because you're representing your country, there's, there's lots of things to think about. It's insurance and everything like that. You get trapped there. Can't yeah. get back. No, exactly. We only we went to the Iberian Masters, and I tell you what, if we yeah, it, was close, winter, you? it was close. We wouldn't have got back. Well, some of the Italian fishermen had to leave in the middle of the night, didn't they? Otherwise, yes. they were going to get locked out of their country. Yes, they left um, on the Saturday night to get there very early Sunday Sunday morning, just so they didn't get locked out. Mm. Get locked out their own. Crazy, country. really. That's crazy that's times. That's what you're dealing with. But the the thing is, as well, it, it's. The whole country is like a, a pressure cooker at this moment in time. Everybody's feeling it. The first couple of weeks, I think every, it seemed like everyone was on holiday. Then as soon as it's gone on, if you, if you notice, we're all in WhatsApp groups for different clubs of people. First of all, there was loads and loads of banter and everything. And slowly, slowly, <laughs> it's just got less. Phasing and less. out, isn't it? Yeah, and realisation is that, is like things are going to change and I think there's going to be certain measures that's going to be in for a long time but you know if that's keep, keeps people alive so be it that's yeah, exactly yeah. right exactly you, obviously we go you know in the press innovations office and stuff and it's, it's a big place there's a lot of people work there yeah and we were saying the other day I, I can't even imagine when we're all next going to be in a group in that office could be next yeah. year it might even be not even then you know? I know I know and I mean to be to be fair it's, it's there's, there's, there is some positives to take out of everything, do you know what I mean? I think, in general, people are being a bit more pleasant to each other when, when, when they see each other in the street. Yeah, definitely. I, mean? uh, there's definitely. A, I think there's a little bit more respect for people's, people's spaces when no barging by or anything like that, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to look for the positives. I, I think people have spent some time with the family as well, Dee. And they've, okay. they've spent some time with the family and realised how important that is as well. I think a lot well, of people have done that. you know with my job, Rob, that sometimes i'm away three or four yeah. nights a week i've just been sat home for seven weeks and i've loved every minute of it but yeah. we've all got to do what we've got to do fact yeah. as well i've actually grown some new air i didn't yeah, know. I, I, thought you, I thought you were going to go for this, this, this cool i've actually put some air spray on it this <laughs> i've sh I shamed steve into it oh, yeah. Shamed, yeah shamed him last uh about last two four days five days ago what does it look like have you seen it yet he sent me a picture he didn't want to send me a picture i'll tell you that he didn't want to send me a picture but gonna, I... yeah i think you should put it up on here Ron. no i won't put it up that's very no, I'm, I'm just i'm, I'm actually that could I'm, be a guest out the window couldn't it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you know it's like it's it's difficult for everybody everybody's getting touchy now and everything like that and yeah i think if if we're allowed to go fishing, even if it's just pleasure thing, and I think people will just just enjoy. They'll forget that people are queuing up at B and Q in supermarkets and that, and just get some fresh air and just do yeah. something that we love. Take your yeah. mind off. And hopefully, a few more people might like join us. A few yeah. more people might start fishing. Yeah, well, you know, you can. You can you've got some people who say the angling trust never do anything to get people into the sport. This is. The biggest thing that is going to get people back into, back the, sport. into the sport. There's still people moaning. All yeah. these new anglers are going to be taking <laughs> off and all this. Like, right, 
God, you can't, can't, yeah, win. You can't, you can't win. win. You can't win. But like you say, I think everyone's getting a bit tetchy now. Do you know what I mean? So I just, I just want to go out and get just drive down the canal. Yeah. And but um, one of the questions: How can you stop people walking around? You just got to have a bit of common sense. If you see someone walking past, you just just remind them. Don't shout, swear at them. I'm sure they don't want to be near you either. You know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of that going off anyway, isn't there? Even when you walk along the street, there's people yeah, crossing the road and it's just how it is now. There's plenty of things you can do without being aggressive. Or, you know what I mean? And that's going from me, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll have a swig of my drink. Have a swig of my drink. <laughs> no comment. So, no, exactly. Yeah, so. no comment. I'm, I'm, be I'm behaving myself. Dean. <laughs> Let's get the, we've got doom and gloom out of the way about all yes. the virus stuff. It's all good. I want you to talk to yeah. me from word go, the route to becoming England feeder team manager. From word go, going fishing, because I think your grounding in England youth yep. was massive on the route through to it. Well, my, my England career started when I was 14 back then, and I was... I was uh, lucky enough to be asked by Roy Jeffries to, to fish. They used to, the, the Junior England team then, they used to do like into club matches. You know, we, we went down to Reading on the River, River Kennet to fish against a couple of junior sections, believe it or not. There was like, there was, I think it was about 30 of us there on the River Kennet and I won my section and, and that, that was it. There's some good anglers about then as well who, who are names now. There was uh, Ian Moulton was fishing, Stuart Conroy, Mike Poulton, who was the first junior world champion. Uh, Lee Adder, all and some of them have gone by the wayside and some of them's carried on. And then in 1988, Roy rung me up and it was the proudest moment I've ever had in my life. As it was like, apart from my daughter being born, that he asked me, do, would I like to go to Italy to fish in the World Junior Championships? Which was the second, what's only the second one then, 1988 right. in uh, on the River Arno in Italy. So it was back then, that's all you had. The, the, the thing was, if you could get to fish for your country, that was yeah. the pinnacle. There was no yeah. fisher manias. There no, was no fisher mania, yeah. no big money matches or anything. The matches were big, but there wasn't big money. And if you think now, we used to win 300 peg matches and win next to nothing. Now you can win a, a 20 peg match and win a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so it just shows you how, how, how things have changed. And then I was uh, luckily enough to represent England uh, again as junior in 1989 on the River Drava in uh, Yugoslavia, which is now part of Croatia, which is Croatia, which was Yugoslavia. And then the, the best one was 1990, which was home pier point. And obviously being a Nottingham lad, it was far from having everyone from school standing behind and shouting. It was <laughs> and we, we got a silver, we ended up with a silver medal. We were just slightly, slightly unlucky. Uh, I, I was home pier point then as a venue. Because obviously I, oh, yeah. I fished Pierpoint a few times, but it was like late nineties, I guess, and it well, was it was it was it had it gone was ridiculous. by. It was it was ridiculous. There was so there was just bank to bank fishing. You're talking with fishing with like eleven and twelve and a half metre poles from the bank in two and a half three foot of water, catching thirty pound of bream. Right. Right. And then obviously straight after that. It showed you kind of venue it was. It, it was only a month after the World Championships. It was the first uh, European Super Cup, which Billy Knott on Facebook has been putting loads of photos on. And it was massive. All the anglers from best anglers ever, some of the best anglers ever lived. 400 pegs on their own pair point. 400 pegs. So sad that it's not, not, that, not that anymore, isn't it? I, I actually uh, I went to see a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mark Lucas, in uh, in. Uh, from Leicester and I says come on let's go down and I was I was working down there I says come on let's go and have a look around down pinpoint and I tell you what I got there and I stood where I won oh, sorry I come second in a 430 peg match every peg on own pinpoint it was a police national uh, competition junior competition and I caught 18 pound of skimmers on Waggler and Maggot. 33 skimmers on Waggler and Maggot for 18 pound. And I stood on the peg and thought of all the people and all the matches that's been there. And then you're just not allowed to fish it anymore. I could have bloody cried. What a shame. I drove, I drove up there last year because I, mm. um, I did a feature on some lakes nearby. And I thought, I've just got yeah. to go have a look at it. And it's bigger than you all remembered. Oh, it's huge. 
it's huge. It's huge. And I even remember yeah. trade shows, tackle companies using their yeah. function rooms as trade shows. Wasn't there. the headquarters there for the NFA at one time? Don't one... joke. <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. <laughs> it could have been. I mean, in the school holidays, uh, I mentioned Roy Jeffries before, when he was uh, when he used to run Leicester Juniors as well. And in the school holidays, he used to arrange like a week's fishing at home. We used to actually stop in the uh, in the hotel there. And it was brilliant. Like just all school kids fishing like 10 hours a day, nip, nip, right. nipping into the bar for a Coca-Cola, of course. Yeah, Coke. Quick Coke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shame, isn't it? Yeah. I bet it's full it of fishing. Yeah? Brilliant. And, you know, I think somewhere like that could, uh, if you was allowed to fish it again, I think you would attract the... The big crowds you could park behind your peg, yeah. and it wouldn't with the kind of stocking policies that waters get now. We've, I, I personally think it's full of fish. I saw fish down there, do you know what I mean? It would, but it wouldn't take much to give it a little bit of a boost, would it? And you could have it for all water users. That's it's a water sports center, it's not a rowing course, it's a water sports center. Exactly, it's a total yeah. shame, mate. You know, yeah, I think there's the odd rowing course dotted around the country that. Ron and Peter Brent, are that yeah, the yeah. anglers aren't really Eaten, allowed to touch. Eaten are they? Dawn. Is it Eaten Dawn? Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and they're solid with fish, like you said. They wouldn't need much, um, much stock to get them up to speed. No, no, but maybe with a, a stronger governing body, we can make them approach us. Oh, we'll see. Maybe this is the kick. Maybe this is this is the kick. Um, the kick on for everybody. We'll see. So obviously, you've moved on. When did you yeah. fishing for England as uh, like a youth, junior, whatever level it was? Well, I went to. Uh, of course, then in, back then you was only allowed to fish as a junior till 18. So I had three, three good years, learnt a lot. And then uh, I didn't go into team fishing until, until later on. I was just enjoying going around fishing with my dad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a good, good crack, yeah. you know what I mean? And getting experience in that. And then obviously, as you know, my dad passed away. And uh, my, who turned out to be he's my best mate and... I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me. Wayne Swisco asked me to fish for Essex Counter. Yeah. And it was the, you know, when you look at the people who, who was in the team at the time, being being asked, even asked, to fish for him was some uh, unreal. And then that really got me back into fishing. I was in a, I was in a bad place when my, when my dad passed away, a real bad place. And that was the, see this again with the fishing, that if it wasn't for Wayne, I don't think I'd be here now, put it that way. That's no. being truthful. No. You know what I mean? Because Wayne got me out the out the shit, really. You know what I mean? And mm. uh, it's uh, which is quite funny because my granddad took Wayne fishing because he used to right. get in trouble when he was a kid. So I don't know <laughs> some things come round, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if it wasn't for Wayne, it, I I don't know where I don't know where I'd be. You know what I mean? So obviously in Essex County, all everything came about, and that we all wanted to fish for England. But God, there's so many good good float anglers and pole anglers on it. it was in, it was impossible yeah. you can you can never say that uh, that they've never picked the best team available I, no, I, I always used to look at that and think look at the england team and thought that is the pinnacle you look at them guys yeah. and they would you, you'd read about them and you just think these guys are untouchable you just, yeah they'd, they'd win they'd be drawn in the same section as you yeah and i was i wasn't even fishing the same match as them but you'd read their review <laughs> you'd read their matches and you'd yeah. think this guy doubled everyone's weight. It was though, it was that good. They always started with about five pounds. <laughs> Unreal, yeah. <laughs> the fishing, was, fishing, everyone was still on a really steep learning curve, weren't they, when you look yeah, back? Yeah, because don't forget, that this is the emergence of pole fishing as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Emergence of pole fishing and that. And yeah, so I enjoyed, just enjoying with Essex County. We, we had a real good laugh with us. Some really, really, really good lads and friends for life, like Gary Miller, Chris Van Der Fleet. Uh, people like that, do you know what I mean? Brilliant, yeah. absolutely yeah, brilliant. And Talk, then, just quickly about Kim, because I used to read all his stuff. Yeah, um, I used to like, like reading all his stuff, and I used to think, God, he's a natural angler rather than a manufactured yeah. angler. And I never got to see him, never got to speak to him. But there's always this mystery in the bounds of him. What What was the crack there? Because you obviously must have dealt with him all the time. The best captain you could ever, the best captain you could ever fish under. I think, I mean. I, Say I speak to Gary Miller and and that because Gary's just a little bit older than me. We was pretty young at the time, and I think he actually made you believe you was better than you was. Right. That's a skill it, in itself, isn't it? It was. He was so. You knew when he wasn't happy. <laughs> he wasn't happy. <laughs> but 
he always gave you a chance to prove him wrong. And he loved being proved wrong, you know. And I suppose as well, because he was the captain and he always listened to people. But when he had something to say, everybody else listened as well. That That is the main thing. But I, I know some people don't like him and that. And whatever happened to his career, I don't know. And it, it's no, no interest to me. But when he was my captain, he's the best captain, club captain I've ever fished under. Yeah. It was, and I went, I went practicing just me and him on our own a couple of times, and he was like a different person, like a different person, and very knowledgeable, but also he wasn't one of those who thought he knew everything. He used to ask you lots of stuff. Do you know mm. what I mean? And that's always the sign of a good angler that they, it's just the tiny little percentages that make you better when you're at a certain level, don't it? Yeah. It's very intense, one. They like when he was fishing. Yeah, but. I think, I think we all are, aren't we? Yeah, well, this, I don't know, I'm pretty chilled. This is, this is Kim Wilson in, in a nutshell. When he was an upholsterer, he was the best upholsterer in the Southwest. All right? He's, when he left, he was one of the best fishermen of his era. All right? And then his other, his, his other hobbies was twitching. He was a bird watcher. And I didn't realise at the time there's like levels of bird watching. And guess what? He was one of the best. Yeah. Simple. That's the kind of character that, he was. Yeah, he's that guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Essex, obviously yeah. had success because that was the glory days of Essex, wasn't it? Yeah, the rainbow armour. Brilliant it was. <laughs> Did you get paid to fish? Yeah, was we got the, paid to fish. Pete Cupter was the, the person for like appearance money, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we used to get appearance money. We used to get appearance money. All the money we won was uh, always split even let among the team and we used to get a parent we used to get a parents money so it was like we used to get 40 quid an appearance fee in in the 90s yeah <laughs> that paid for your petrol and that and but that is brilliant it's crazy it? and yeah. i tell you what that shows how good in, important brand is because that's at the time where i'd say van den i was at their peak as well so obviously it, oh, it God, worked yeah. yeah having the team involved worked with the branding and the marketing mm -hmm. side of it yeah, well, it was it was it was amazing, and and we we used to have. It, do you know the funny thing is, you you would think with like that much money going about and everything that it would be like going in an office. It wasn't. It was absolutely brilliant. We used to meet at Peter's house and have a meeting. Of course, there was some really serious conversation, but it was. I think that's one of the reasons why we were so successful. As well, we didn't take ourselves too serious. Fishing, yeah. When we used to go, when we used to go out and like practice, we used, to, well, we used to go out and get drunk and enjoy ourselves and everything like that. It was so chilled out. And I think when you when you've got that kind of uh, when you're chilled out and that, I think you can just do better. Just think better than that. Do you know what I mean? Even uh, even uh, Milson got uh, hammered a couple. Of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it never struck me the sort of person who's that oh, sort no, of person. Was but it? don't forget at the same time though, it's like. You had all the other teams. You had Tricast Highfield, who was our, always our like our channel, especially in Super Leagues. You who know what I mean? That, um, Vinny, Vinny Jones, Mark, Vinny Jones, Mark, Mark, yeah. Vinny Smith, uh, Vinny, Vinny Smith, Vinny Smith, Vinny Smith. Vinny Smith. Vinny Jones. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking Paul Gascoigne here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you'd like. But all the other teams, there was Dawkins. You know what I mean? Thatchers. It was yeah. all absolute lunatics. Well, the funny thing was, we used to always meet in, like, being in, not being in Nottingham, we used to have two finals in Nottingham. We had the Winter League final and the Super League final. And there was always, like, a couple of weeks in between. So, being in Nottingham, I was more like the entertainments manager. Right. Mon Monday night at the Black Orchid, Tuesday night, have a night off a mill. <laughs> when, Wednesday, Wednesday night was Ritzer. Because they used to be on the, <laughs> used to be on the embankment, didn't they? There used to be yeah. a final on the embankment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I was the entertainment manager for uh, for a while while the finals was in uh, while there was in Nottingham. Right. But it was it was good to just like let your hair down, but the fishing was was really serious, and we was we was pretty pretty good back then. Right. So after that, we're going fast forward. Yeah. Because you fished a few, I think, white takers festivals. That sort yeah, of thing. I started going white takers in 1995 with my dad, and I won the first festival I've ever ever fished. I read the article. Yeah, I won, you uh, didn't won know the, how to fish meat, but sort of, was it full <laughs> booth there? 
Uh, who were you stopping with? Paul Boothby, were you? No, no, I'll stop him. I went down, but Boo Boo was 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 <laughs> was next door, and he, uh, and he actually came, he actually come and put me right on the last day. And I needed a section with. And that's when it was four peg, day festivals, isn't it? Four day Wednesday. festival, and I had uh, I drew peg two on pole ring. Even back then, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, luckily, I caught some big skimmers and uh, some roach on casters. And to be fair, Paul sat behind me and gave me. And I was like, my head was a bit of a shed. I thought I was going to catch some carp, and uh, he helped me through it. So, him, uh, Paul, my older brother Brian, who was down with us at the time, he used to do a bit of fishing. We all went into Newquay and uh, had a couple of drinks that yeah. night. All yeah, night. I bet. <laughs> So, yeah, so White Acres then did all the festivals. Five weeks a year we used to do White Acres. Five yeah. weeks a year. And then and then things changed a little bit. And then 2011 came around. And it was something that's going to that change my life, change your life as well, Rob. And uh, it's going to change other people's lives in the future. It was the start of the World Feeder Championships. And... Uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy, shall we say? But Tommy, well, obviously, Tommy I wasn't put, involved for the first year, you know, year and well, probably first eighteen months. Tommy put a massive target on his back, mm. and when he selected the team, and myself uh, and uh, other people was uh, trying to put the rat in the ring, and there's no. But one thing I've learned being a team, nearly a team fisherman all my life. It's not about being an individual. It's about being a team member. Sometimes you have to take a bad in for the team. It's as simple as that. And with the obviously, when when he picked his team, apart from Steve Ringer, would be in anybody's feeder team. It doesn't yeah. matter where's that. I think he picked a team that was team orientated. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I think and also I mean, had some international experience. Looking international back, everyone myself, has yeah. myself, Mick Bile, Steve Emming Gray, Darren Cox was all we've all fished internationals. And as you know now, Rob, being at that level, the fishing is the easiest part. Fishing is the easiest part. International the fishing stuff. is so different to yeah. being at home fishing. Because yeah. there's a lot of good anglers in the country, a lot of good feeder anglers. Brilliant, yeah. But yeah. then give them some bloodworm and some joker and some different ground baits and tell or them just, there's some catfish or crassios or, or just they give can't them use some a fixed rig. Or just give them some instructions they don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, simple as that. Because yeah. it's it's very easy to to sit and to sit next to someone who's catching big fish you can't catch one. And then you've got to told you get told for team points you've got to you've got to catch get your head fish. down. You get absolutely mullered next peg, but it's for the grace of God, isn't it? It's for it's for the cause, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's what wins your gold medals. And obviously, we got absolutely slated the first year. But the, the standard of everybody wasn't wasn't brilliant, you know what I mean. And then we moved on to uh, moved on to Belgium. And to be fair, we had it spot on in Belgium. We just had a little bit of bad luck, and uh, otherwise we would have got one gold. But looking back at it now, we probably wasn't ready to win gold mm. because we wouldn't have learned the lessons we learned further on. If you it would have been too easy, wouldn't it? It would have been too easy. And then obviously uh, we won bronze medal, uh, uh, so that was was it, it was, and all would you notice as well all throughout the world championships because I think that's when you start to get involved, wasn't it, Rob? Too. I, I was fishing the friendly matches on the yeah. rowing course on the again in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, every every time everybody got together in these international competitions, everybody's getting better. Yeah. All the lesser nations. Yeah. When you are when you're learning all the time, they move quicker. Do you know what yes, I mean? Of course. And obviously, I've spent I've spent quite a bit of time. Obviously, my story is a bit of different. But I've spent a lot of time bank walking for the for the last <laughs> three, probably for three three of the uh, five years of being involved, which is yeah. a lot of road in itself. But it has to be done. And yeah. I've seen it. I've seen the nations get better and better. And and myself, when I first fished that rowing course in Ghent. Yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, I can do this job. I can beat these guys. Why am I being picked? Why am I being picked? And I look back and think, oh, I was crap. Well, I, I, think, I didn't have a clue when I, I look think, back. I think that result actually made us all up our game because we all think what we think of each other and as a team and everything. And when you get to world level, there's no gimmicks. No. It's all about hard work. Mm -hmm. And th there is a tiny bit of luck. 
which is in, in, in all in all sports. But when it's at that level, the, everything's so fine. You know what I mean? And I think when we, we left Belgium, we were dis, disappointed. We hadn't won gold medal. But I think it was that result that spurred us on to be more professional. Most of us put our poles down because yeah. back then we were still Doing fishing white takers festivals and everything like that. And it was like, and no one sonifies that more than Steve Ringer, yeah. one of the most uh, gifted commercial anglers, made his name on commercials. That was it. Gone. You needed what you need to do. And it's that, that's what you need to do. You, if you want to be good at one thing, you've got to do one thing. Yeah. You're specialised. Yeah. It was, then, was it Ireland the year after, or was it Holland? No, no, oh. <laughs> no, no, it was South Africa. Ah, uh, South Africa, yeah, yeah I, I didn't get to... No, neither did I. I yeah, we, we, <laughs> we both skipped that, did we? Uh, yeah, not by choice. <laughs> not, by, not by choice. And uh, I, uh, I made the manager really, really... Uh, I told him exactly what I thought, but he was happy with that because it said I showed passion. It was the fire I needed lighting under my backside. You know what I mean? So then Ireland came around and I think we was a, a better team, a better unit, you know what I mean? And then the rest of the history, it was, it was, it was unbelievable, yes. unbelievable, fe unbelievable feeling, you know, being someone like me brought up on a council estate in Nottingham, you never think you're ever going to be a world champion. Yeah. Talk us through the weekend on that, Dean, for your world champs. Well, obviously, you know, <laughs> me and you sat together most of the time. <laughs> and I've never been very good at practising, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I actually like, uh, towards the end of the week, I was always better than the start of the week. Yeah. And uh, I drew my, there was four sections on the new greenway, and I drew on the garden centre, peg, peg seven. And we all knew that uh, the top end, the high numbers, was absolutely solid with fish and I thought god almighty if I finish 10th there I'll be I'll be uh I'll be lucky I had a uh a guy from Kazakhstan next peg who uh, was cracking open the old Stella before this <laughs> do you remember the Kazakhstan lads they loved it didn't they <laughs> they loved it it was unbelievable we got that uh, me and Rooney because Rooney was your bank runner wasn't he yeah and he was yeah he was, yeah. was, was helping out all week and um we've got the Kaz I've got the Kazakhstan shell suit Chelsea I've got top. I've got one of the hats at the wall. <laughs> and they're on the Stella. <laughs> oh yeah. All week, Joe. There's, all week. there's a couple of stories to tell that's that's not for these like <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I started fishing and I got into a really good rhythm and ended up catching about 249 roach, I think it was. And uh, weighed eleven and a half kilo, which was fourth in that section, which I was like, it was yeah. Unbelievable. That was like a section win to me because I got beat by the three end pegs, which was all bream weights. And uh, so I was absolutely, absolutely like over the moon. And then to see how, to see how the rest of the team had done. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. And then the second day, I drew another crap peg. I'll never forget, it was A19, which is near the famous... Uh, that bit where we sat that time, Rob. Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy on the there was a guy on the point who was catching a few fish, and I caught a few roach. Started to catch a few skimmers, and I was always one or two fish behind. I ended up fishing, finishing second in my section by about three hundred grams. And uh, but team job, and it was like when Tommy came down with like an hour to go. And yeah, I, was, never, I was on the bank, and Tommy had told me two I've hours never, to go. With I've running. never. He says he come down. And I've never seen anybody so happy. And, and I just was so happy for him because all the crap that he took at the start led to this. Led to this moment. And his father had passed away the week before. You know what I mean? So he had a lot on his plate. And I was more happy and proud for him for that moment than I was for myself because he's the one who stuck his head above the parapet picked his team, stuck by us, and like, and yet we tackle, as, as a manager, you don't get the plaudits, all the anglers get the plaudits, do you know what I mean? And I'll always be thankful that he gave me that moment, yeah. always. Yeah, always and that's the week that he said to me, look, bring your gear, have a practice with the lads. And, yeah. and obviously, yeah. he was planning to fish, or at yeah. least practice, he was planning to fish, but obviously he couldn't yeah. deal with 
his dad passing away, all the yeah. other crap that goes with it, and he just have to yeah. say, "Look, Rob, you." Oh, he, he had, he had, have a go. In in some respects, he had a, and a he had a real a real busy week. Do you know what I mean? Because there's so many. It, it's not nice, is it? You know what I mean? But the the consummate professional that he is, he raised above it, and shown us how to win. He yeah. showed us how to win. And from that day on, my own personal fishing got better. Because he always says, everybody can fish, but he teaches us how to fish world championships. Yeah. And that, and you'll know that, Rob, because it, it's true. It's, yeah, it's true. Totally different, totally different mindset. And um, the, it was the best. The best we, we didn't even have to turn up second day when you look at the results. But that was obviously Stephen, world champion. Uh, I think Mick was bronze medalist, wasn't it? Mick was bronze medalist. But you Mick think the was... effort that went into that, Dean? How many times we went over to Ireland? He's... Oh, oh he's, 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 he's he's brilliant. Yeah, I, yeah. Even when I wasn't even in the team, I was going over. Me and Rooney went over a couple of times. And but that's if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. And the individual in World Championships, individual performances are a byproduct of a good of a good team mm, plan. Yeah nearly nearly always do you know what I mean so it just shows I mean I think I think I was eighth overall I think uh, Adam was seventh overall or something like that I think Phil was 15th something like that yeah. so it just shows you that to get your points it was it was a it was a it was an unbelievable venue though to yeah. be fair yeah brilliant venue was brilliant it? host as well uh, we made what people don't realize I don't even knew you know, you know this we was the we made history because the uh, this is what I've been told by the locals that uh, it's the first time that the British national anthem was uh, uh, played at the uh, GAA ground, the Gaelic football ground. Yeah, maybe. Coastal. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, obviously there's so, issues, isn't there? So well, well the issues that that's all gone and dusted now. Yeah. But you know, it's nice, and the, the welcome that we got there was same as every time you get to Ireland. It's absolutely brilliant people, aren't they? Great people. Yeah, super brilliant people. Breeder at the guest house, super. Oh, the, the scones. Yeah, the scones, the potatoes every night. God. <laughs> we have Stop. two balls, Joe, come out full of potatoes every night. And she ended up yeah. taking them back because we just couldn't eat it all. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Sandwich food you, you, gave us. When, whenever you go to Ireland, wherever you go, you get well fed, the hospitality don't you? is unbelievable. And I wonder always why, because you, you, a lot of the uh, Irish are all quite big blokes, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Real <laughs> big hands and everything. Now I know why. God yeah, almighty. The fed up. The bread like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah Holland, it's good. Holland, the year after. How many Holland, times did we visit that venue? God. I, think, I reckon we went about seven times, eight times, because we went two years before, didn't we? Yeah, Just, we did, what, yeah. what was the venue called? Just because we didn't mention it. It was Inniscara in Ireland. Inniscara in Ireland. Then it was again to Tanazan. Ship good, pr good pronunciation, that I reckon. Yeah, yeah. to Narzen, yeah, uh, in uh, Holland, which is right on the Belgian border. And uh, it was only about four hours away, wasn't it, Rob? It was quite yeah, easy to you, get there. Yeah, once you got off the tunnel, what was it? Two, two hours, two and a half hours? Two and a half hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was quite, easy, quite a nice little trip, wasn't it? <laughs> nice, nice, nice canal, you know, just like your normal canal, 50 foot deep in the middle and <laughs> yeah. 208, 280 yards wide. Yeah. With an odd yeah. little boat going along it. Yeah, odd little boat that you see. <laughs> that you, these boats used to come past you and you used to look up to them like, they were like oh. a block of flats going through. The water just used to have calmed, didn't it? Yeah. And then sink away about four foot, then it'd come back. Yeah, that, there you, was a, it was a hard but rewarding venue, yeah, wasn't it? We, yeah, we, had, we had a method there that was like, uh, that, that worked. Yeah. That worked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was close, wasn't it? Because obviously, half a point. Half a point. So, well, who was second? The Dutch were there. Was no, the France. France. Because obviously the fishing was rock hard there, wasn't it? Was it odd fish, yeah. odd, odd bream, odd mullet? I think, odd... I think first day I caught, I never caught a bream. I wanted any bream sections. I think the first day I caught seven fish and the second day uh, six fish, like a kilo and a half and just over a kilo. And the, the second day I ain't had a bite for like three hours and it's gone round and they've lifted up and there's like a massive ledge and I'm stood up and it's got snagged on it. I oh God, no, no. And I've got it on video somewhere. And I'm like, this is really important. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I've like stood on my box, wound, like that. Oh, still fast. I got up, gone to the back of my section box, lifted up, pulled it, no, wound down, gone to the other end of the box, wound down, right. So I've gone back to my, because I knew how important this fish, it could be 
like you're talking three points you mm. for like 200 grams i've wound down like and i've got the video i've got my rod in me and, like, and i've gone and i can remember it i went please <laughs> let's jump in come out <laughs> i think it was a roach about 10 out so i was absolutely like the pressure that was like <laughs> unbelievable you know and i finished fourth in my section by 10 grams yeah what's um, how, how many was in that section dean this is what people uh, 15 that, that that is probably a that was it it wasn't split was it was that split? there were splits yeah there were splits i think split. there were 29 teams in there weren't there yes and uh, that's why we got the half points i say you got the half points yes yeah, yeah. so we, we won by half a point, which was, at, don't forget, that was after that someone got weighed in wrong in the wrong half mm. of the section and the French got, backs, ex, got an extra point or half a point. That was yes, it. yeah, there's some countbacks. And then it was obviously on to try and do the triple, the hat trick <laughs> in Serbia. The hottest, oh God, how hot was that? We flew <laughs> yeah. over, didn't we, as well, because there was obviously some, there was some yeah. trouble somewhere on the border. and that yeah. was Tommy, was on, Tommy didn't want us to drive, did he? He was, he was no. worried about us no. driving over there with the gear. But that was good. Preston sorted out all the gear being sent over there. Unbelievable. Sent a container full of gear. I mean, they've been absolutely brilliant since 2011. And we're, we're simple. I wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for Preston Innovations. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You know, you, you need a good backer. And uh, Preston's have really stood up to the stood up to the test, to be fair. Absolutely brilliant. And cause it, have you ever known a time when you've asked for something you've never had it, Rob? No, not, no. There you go. Don't right. get any better than that, does it? No. Every t every time. And when you think about it, a lot of it's taken out of our hands as well. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. For somewhere like Contain South Africa or Serbia. Container, containers it's there. to South Africa, it's shipping there. stuff out. Yeah. It's unbelievable. They, man, so, didn't many of them do it, is there? No, and obviously there, that, that's a big part of it, some, isn't it? Because well, a lot of people go, can't get the kit. Well, let's not forget, that's at their expense. That doesn't come out of the budget that we get for the World Championships. That's down to Preston Innovations being a, a bloody good sponsor. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it, if it come out your budget, it would... You, yeah. You, you, you won't be able to do it. Yeah. You won't be able to do it. But this is above and beyond, you know? Yeah. Because so, yeah, it's not a cheap exercise, is it? It's not a cheap no. exercise by any means. No, no it's not. It's as Joe, as, yeah, as Joe knows when he probably looks at the books when... There's nothing to do with me. Isn't it? <laughs> I've just got to make it, make it pay at the end of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you've got to make sure we get the coverage. Yeah, that that venue in Serbia, it was roasting. Where did we go there twice? Didn't we there we, twice, we went there like. in uh, April, didn't we? And uh, so we went there in May. It was my birthday, and I've, yeah. I've got a nice Serbian cake. Ah, uh, yes, a beautiful Serbian cake. And I, there she is. Hey, <laughs> I, hello um, to Jan, and hello to Rob. <laughs> Emily was only about six months old when uh, when we went to Ireland. I've got some lovely photos, haven't I? I can remember uh, the pictures. Everyone's got older, haven't, hasn't they? Because obviously... Yeah. Apart from me, I ain't got any older, have I? Yeah, you have your birthday soon. I know my birthday soon. What does Daddy sound like on his fishing videos? Mm, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> what do I always say on every one of the fishing videos I do? Bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. Bits and Every, bobs. Everybody's got a keyword they always go back to. Mine is when I can't think of anything. Is bits and bobs. <laughs> <laughs> What's Lee's? Really, 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 really. really. Yeah. <laughs> likes to emphasise it, doesn't he, Lee? Get out of here. <laughs> Put in. Oh, we've got the secret. Oh, go on then. Go, no, go. Go to the sleep, Emily's. Uh, toy. She's asleep. Go to oh, right. so I thought he's, I thought he's just going to say, "Mum's asleep." Um, and she has a new dress on. She has a new dress on? Yeah. Oh, well, really? She, it doesn't really fit. It doesn't really fit. <laughs> I'll come have a look in a bit. Keep the noise down. She's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Serbia. It was uh, that canal, wasn't it? How, how, yeah. When we went in May, we it, it was a totally different venue. But yeah, when, it was. when we went in the, in July, I didn't so think hot. countries that place got that hot. It was like no. 38 degrees, wasn't it? Yeah, it was ridiculous because obviously we were sitting on that concrete. It looked so dry. Edge. It was so dry, Joe. It was so. <laughs> I was hot watching it the other week. Funny enough, on YouTube, the the uh, Rob Houston covered it, didn't he, at the time? Yeah, yeah he did. did watching yeah. it, it looked so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> dry. Mind you, saying that the the, the, the second day it it, uh, it did cool down a bit with a four hour thunderstorm, didn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. Or which, so, the which, thunderstorm. Which, the thunderstorm which that used to happen. Yeah. Yeah, what was did, that poisson yeah. chat that you was fishing for a lot of there? Well, only only come probably yeah, no. Thursday. Was it Wednesday or Thursday? 
they, they turned up like Wednesday, Thursday, mm. and then they actually moved all the way up the match length because they all ended up near the locks, didn't they? That's what happened, yeah. And um, I, had, I had a really good day on Thursday of practice catching yeah. them. Was it Thursday? Yeah. In a minute. Come on then. Hey, up another one. Hello. Munch bunch. Oh, she didn't want to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, then, it was it was really funny because we, we sat on one of the middle sections, and there was there was like there was, there was some of them was like that big, and some of them oh, was like yeah. proper donkeys. There was there was in your feeder and everything, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The indication you used to get, and then I, that's I I ran the match the second day for Adam because obviously all throughout the length they were catching these catfish on the first yeah. day, and I was I was told by um, well, it was Tommy who I was listening to, and he was saying they only show for a few days, they only show for a few days, they get full up. Yeah. And the plan, obviously, was to fish for them again the second day on the Sunday. Yeah. And that's when it started drifting off the length. And it's very difficult, though, fall. Rob. Don't forget, we scored nine points that first day. Yeah, oh, yeah you, could, you couldn't change the tactics. How, how you couldn't you, have how, changed the tactics. How can you? Because the conditions hadn't changed or anything like that. Yeah. We didn't have a, such a brilliant drive. Was, second day, I was sat back in that snaggy bay. It was horrible. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And we had to make some decisions, and, and that was it. But... We finished up with silver medals, so two golds and a silver. Yeah, three years. I mean, it's when you look at it, we were so disheartened after that silver medal, but a silver medal at a world level now, that is brilliant still, isn't it? Well, this is how things have moved on, is you take any medal now. Yeah, yeah. The, guy, the other teams have got so much better, so better. Yeah. Brilliant. And then Serbia, goals. after Serbia, became uh, Portugal. Yeah, Portugal. Right, let's talk about Portugal. You got your go, didn't you, Rob? I got me go, but at the expense of someone else. <laughs> I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the funny thing is we, we, we went to uh, we went to uh, Portugal. We went twice, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It's not it's not an easy place to get to. One one time we went on these twenty four hours in a boat, right? And then or it's like twenty eight hours in the van, mm. and it was like we, we got there and. What we didn't know, it, when we got there, it was solid with fish. There's just fish everywhere, aren't there? Big yeah. barbel, carp, carassio. It, just, it was just... It like, was really, I, I, did I win that first, the Tommy Picker in Memorial? 30, 32 kilos off the MPEG. 32 kilos off the MPEG. Phil was second with 30 kilos, or 31. Well, and I was it in was a like, pack cage about eight pegs to your left, and I had like nine kilos, and that, I think that was one of the lowest weights in... Well, And the bites, the, the bites yeah. from them barbel. We pick up one of them on one of those barbel, those... Kilo, two kilo fish, then bigger ones. And, oh, I've never seen awesome. anything like it. You, it, it, they happen so fast. You know, like if you saw like next peg, do something. You look around, you look back, and your rod's not there. Yeah. So, <laughs> Caved in. So powerful. So. Powerful. And then we went back the second time, and we caught a few fish, didn't we? But I think we had rose tinted specks on because we caught so many fish the time before. Yeah. And then when the match come round, we, we, I think we actually learned that all the fish were migrated with. There's hardly anything in there. No, apparently they, they go there to spawn. That's what we were told. Yep. Right? We'd hit it perfect the first time yep. we've been. Yeah. What was it, a bleak match in the end? Oh. No, it wasn't, Joe. It, no. Wasn't. No. <laughs> it was a cart match, which some nations turned it into a bleak match, bleak match to yeah. our disgust. But it, we, were, we didn't have it quite right anyway, did we? No, no I'll be honest. I was absolutely crap all week. Yeah. Well, I I, obviously, I was, I was good all week. And then on the you first day, all, I was just so unlucky. Well, you, you know the kind of angler I am, Rob. When it's yeah. like that, it, if you see me catching a fish, everybody puts a bigger feeder on. They know what kind yeah. of fisherman I am. You know yeah. what I mean? They, they know how I fish. And, uh, and it was just totally wrong. I got it so wrong. I wasn't very good. I, I just... It's just one of them venues that uh, when the fish were there the time before, I was good at it. And when I got there, I think I was a bit, it was like, I think everything had took its toll. Do you know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was hot there as well. 40 yeah, degrees. Four, yeah. Up to 43 degrees. Get your brolly up, Joe. Get it your brolly up. And then you imagine. Like, ants the size of like, ants that pick bits of sweet corn up and take them out. Your they were carrying bed. the sweet corn away. Carrying the ants. The sweet oh. <laughs> and and the, the accommodation that we stopped in the first time, <laughs> when me and Phil had to sleep on the floor, oh, it was horrendous. Horrendous. But, but you're not in Albufeira. You're in like the, the most rural part of uh, Portugal that you could ever imagine. Do you mm. know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> I, can honestly, I can honestly say that was... Uh, that one to forget, was it? Well, yeah, because that, that more or less 
end of my England career because obviously I had uh, Lee Kerry coming in from the wings and that, you know what I mean? And I knew, I knew, I knew myself, do you know what I mean? And I knew that my time was up. And if I'm totally honest, I probably wasn't spending as much time as I was because I'd got like promoted at work. I'm a lot more busy at work, a lot more responsibility, more responsibility at home, daughter growing up and that, do you know what I mean? So, and at the time I was absolutely mortified when Tommy rung me, but I knew, I knew. How did the conversation yeah. go then, Danny? What, did he just bluntly say it or did he I knew. ask your no, opinion? No, no, he, or... he rung me around, I appal, family, always, Tommy always asks you if your family's okay first, which is obviously absolutely brilliant, you know what I mean? I respect that. And uh, he says, right, pal. I went, I know, I know. He said, but, there is a but. I went, right. And he went, I want you to be me number two. What do you think? I went, yeah. That was it. Right, straight away. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. You know what I'm like, Rob. I, you've always said to me, I like that kind of stuff. And I do. Mm. You know what I mean? And did have no hesitation at all to do it. Not one. Yeah. And that was it. And no, I could, I could see. I tell, what, I tell you what made me think it, Dean, is because when Mick, because Mick won bronze that year in yeah. Portugal, and I've seen you when they, when Mick went up. I'm sure they played the national anthem or a bit of the national anthem there. The, I think bronze. they played it as he was walking up or something. Yeah, like that. and I watched you, and I watched you beaming with the national yeah. anthem. I thought Dean loves this representing his yeah. country. Dean absolutely loves it. Been doing it from when I was. Uh, 16 years old. Mm. Hello. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're going outside. Yeah. I bet you're good at gardening as well now, aren't you? We've got a lovely garden. We've now. got um, AstroTurf, patio laying, Hello. IKEA building. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Superb. All good? She's yeah, been good, in the sun, Dean. She's got a nice tan. Who? This is B. Mrs. Big, yeah, because I've been doing all the gardening. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Not, built, not, not, not built like a garden, have we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, I, that, I've always been that kind of. I've always been that kind of person. You know what I mean? I've, I've always, I've never chased really the big matches and that because I've always. That's what fishing is to me. You know what I mean? Representing yeah. your country will always be the number one thing for me. But like you say, in Portugal, I, I knew I wasn't. I, I wasn't the same person I was the year before fishing wise. I wasn't good enough. That's mm. the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So hard to admit, easy to admit now, you know what I mean? But, and then obviously Lee Kerry stopped in and won every single thing available the year that he got picked for England. So I, this is what I say. How good of a replacement did you need to, to have for me? You <laughs> <laughs> had to find somebody that was won yeah. everything domestically. Yeah. You know what I mean? To replace me. So how good was I? <laughs> yeah, it was the, yeah. <laughs> Top of the tree. Yeah, Lee came in and obviously then I didn't fish the year after again. Yeah. In Italy. But what happened yeah. obviously managerial wise, because Tommy was number one, you were number two. How did it work and how much inf how much of a free reign did he give Do you? Do you know what I realise? How much of a nightmare we all are. <laughs> right. Okay. We we do you know when you're sitting there, Rob? We all yeah. think, we all think we sit and do the same things and think. It's unbelievable to watch. And Tommy pointing it out, he went, "Watch this." He went after about ten minutes. He went, "He'll do that. He'll do something over there." He went, "Are you joking?" And he did it. Like uh, Phil messes around with his feeders and that. He went, "Watch this." He had three casts. He hadn't, he hasn't he hasn't he hadn't caught anything. He'll do something. It was like. I went, how do you know this? Because I've been watching your idiots for, for seven years. <laughs> I was like, that is unbelievable. And that is, and then you've got to try and uh, enhance that into a team plan. I mm. also but try and cater for everyone's individual traits. That's why I've got so much respect for the guy. It's unbelievable, you know, because it's not easy because you can't take the natural talents away from the people because that's how they fish. You can't sit on a box and fish like Steve Ringer or Joe Carras or Bob Nord or Alan Scotton. You are what you are. And trying to get the best out of you, but also in a team plan, it's bloody difficult. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and you realise a lot when you're standing on the other side, you know? 
Yeah. Can you imagine? The, sleep, the sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've had a list to deal with this year. Bloody heck. Hang on, oh, let's go South Africa first. Oh, here we go. We haven't heard this story a million times, Rob. <laughs> now, this is his managerial life. Forget my amazing performance. <laughs> let's talk about Dean's managerial life. Yeah, you caught a catfish, Rob. Rob, Rob we've heard about it. Say, what did I say earlier? <laughs> Individual performances um, are a byproduct of a, of, of a good uh, team. Of course, of course. This is why we're talking yeah. about the managerial side of it. Did you know he caught a catfish? The manager Dean? set everything up. Did you know oh, he caught a catfish? Hang on a sec. Rob. The catfish. Why did you get the catfish in? What did um, I tell you that day? Uh, no, I got the catfish in because of the power gun rig. Yeah. And also... Did I not ring... tell everyone that they needed a bigger landing net just in case? Uh, who was the only one? I had one up though, didn't I? Every day. He, ma he, made, he made sure he had the right gear this year. Right, right gear. I'll tell you yeah. what, I was prepared. I was bloody prepared because I'm not falling down. Oh, no, that's, that's what he said. So, I mean, what a place to go to. What yeah. a place to Indeed, go to. That was a stunning place. And that, the experience of that, is just absolutely amazing. Just absolutely amazing. You, you can't believe the, the, the country. It's just stunning. Mm. One, one minute, it's like it breaks your heart, what you see. And the next minute, it's like unbelievable. It's, so, it's a very emotional place. And I can see why... Uh, a lot of people say, like Tommy's always said, it's his favourite place too. I can understand that. Yeah. I can no, understand that. You it's, see some of the poverty different. on the streets, but then you see some of the riches that other people have and the, the difference between the two is massive. Oh, um, it's, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? Yeah, but what a venue. When you drive along that venue in the morning, it's just fantastic. You see all the <laughs> what, when all it had been raining, When it had been raining for two days, we all got stuck in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few problems, wasn't there? But yeah, we're but how was the managerial side? Because obviously that's your first proper. Daddy, Tommy had. Headphones. Where are your headphones? Um, up there. Uh, just give me one sec. I've got to get these no headphones. Get the headphones. Oh. Got some trophies there, look, Joe. Yeah, I can see the trophies. Pride of place, isn't there? Pride of place. My trophies aren't allowed in the house. Oh. No. It's, only a it's only a couple. My wife calls them dust gathers. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mum, we're in the loft. Then I, just, I chucked away a lot the other, the other week. Oh. I always have a bit of a clear out. Uh, South Africa, the uh, the fishing side of it is it's absolutely full of fish. But like every venue, this little this venue was like loads of fish. But there's bits where you don't want to be, and I hate to I hate to like blame the draw, but there was one crap peg in B section, and we drew it mm. twice. Right in the middle, like B, Adam, Adam Wakelin drew it. He drew B, B13 twice, twice. Oh. And that's in, rare, isn't it? In world champs, you can't oh, usually God, draw the yeah. same peg twice, can you? Or no, how does that work? We, we drew the same peg in the same person, and it went this way B1 won the section both days, B2 second, B3, B4, and then B20, B19. It was like yeah, the yeah. section went like, then you got to the middle, and, and obviously it. He finished seventh on the first day, and then the second. They were big day. sections, weren't they? 20, 20 or twenty-one, was it? Twenty, twenty-two, was there? Right. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, we we we. Well, I took responsibility. I could have changed a couple of things in that, but it's very very difficult to to get an accurate accurate count of what everybody else was catching. Do you know what I mean? In, in a twenty odd peg section. Yeah, the fish were all like, different sizes. as Well, it wasn't like. Yeah, you could just put a tick next to it every time someone catches a fish because it could be a was kilo a fish, it yeah. could have been a, a six ounce fish, it could have been anything. Or a or 20 pound catfish. When did Tommy make the decision then that he was because it, it was a Tommy saying, I can't do it, Dean's the man? Is, is that how it worked? No, Tommy, Tommy, uh, Tommy rung me up and told me that he'd uh, uh, put, the, put his resignation in. I was absolutely mortified. I was, I was upset actually, mm. you know, because it's like an end of an era. Yeah. The guy who put his neck on the shoulders for me and other people, but for me, you know what I mean, to to make me a world a world champion twice. Mm. And you know, some of the experience that's come along with that, you know what I mean, is uh, and then it was like he says, "That's it, pal. Uh, you're the man now." I was actually really upset. Right. I was really upset because it's been a long eight years. We've all a lot of water's passed under the bridge in uh, nine years, and 
he has always stuck his neck out for us and I'll always uh, be very, very grateful for that. Now I've just got to stick my neck out for you all, aren't I? Yeah, you've got to try. You've got to try. So what do you think then is the plan for World Champions? Do you think it's going to run for next on this same I'm, calendar is going to be running next year? Or? I hope so, yeah. I hope so because... Uh, it's a good venue, we, isn't we've it? All, we've been to the venue in France. It's an absolute brilliant venue. You know what I mean? Uh, if we say we've all been, you know yeah. what I mean? That's the di disappointing thing. We've all been, had a look at it, got to grips with it. I'll say all in our own time and money and effort. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, uh, it's everybody's had the chance to go over there out their own pocket, but that's what it means. And as you know, Rob, and it's a brilliant venue, and it yeah. could really, 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 really suit us. Could, yeah. uh, but all good. But hopefully that is the case, and uh, hopefully again they'll have the uh, they'll have the the challenge match as well, which. Mm. Um, some people will know that I've actually tried to make another couple of like feeder teams to, to feed, a, feed, feed a feeder team. Feed a feeder, feeder teams, teams, yes. And, you know what I mean? Just to give, because it's very, very difficult, difficult to, to ask somebody to step up to be an international without actually being in international scenes. We all did it in 2011. It's like a rabbit being caught in the headlights. Mm. It's, you know what I mean? So it's about getting a taste. And the thing is as well is a lot of people out there, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. But once you've had a taste for it, it's not for everybody. There's some people who's come along and decided not to do it. It's not for them because it isn't as easy as people make out. It's not as easy as people make out. So you, it's a chance. To chance you have to make your sacrifices to... as well, as we've, as we've all found out. You have to make your sacrifices. Your own personal fishing in individual events maybe suffers. You yeah. can't do those events that you used to do. So, you know, you yeah. just got to make the choice. Well, it's world championship and it? it's elite level. Yeah. And you're only going to be elite level if you, if you, you act in an elite level, fish the best matches. Yeah. It's no good being, I don't care what anyone says, it's no good being the big fish in a little pond and expecting to go in the big pond because, like we've always said, these, these nations now, are absolutely brilliant. I mean, they're all look, in as well, aren't they? Look, you look, you look at Hungary. In the last, they're probably the most improved nation in the last few years. But it's not just in feeder fishing. You look at the results going through the float. Uh, you know what I mean? So Poland are absolutely wiping the floor of everybody in the in the float. They're coming to the feeder as well. These are good anglers. They're just, they're just. And one thing that a lot of people in England don't realise is. Every single match that they fish, they fish with bait measures, they fish with restricted hook lengths, they fish the exact world championship rules, the same amount of time to set up. They do that week in, week out. We do it twice a year. Mm. Simple. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, no, the, that's no, the crack. No, You've got no to be doing problem. them matches as, yeah. as often as you can. No going up the bank, setting a waggler up halfway through or a, a, putting a method feeder out there. None of that. Filling it in down None the edge. That. Yeah, there's none of that, and you so you've got bait restrictions. So the planning side of it ha is comes into it more. Do you know what I mean? Since so you can just go and get another another bag of pellets or another four pints of maggots out of your bait bag. Can't do it. So you have to. Can you hear? I'm, be, I'm, be, I'm being summoned. Oh, yeah. What have you got to do now? I don't know. I'm just getting daddy, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to have any fun, are you? That's be right. That's what dads do, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Do you know what I've it. got to go do, Dean? Wrestle, wrestle. No, no, hang some curtains. The Put a curtain pole. Job, the worst job. Ever. No, I've just done that. IKEA flat pack. That's the worst job. Do you, are you put a, a curtain batten up to make it easy for yourself? No. So now you've got to drill in. You've got to drill, got three, drill holes, into the, three holes, into holes the in a disc, <laughs> in a disc that big, and try not to miss a brick. Try not to get on the edge of a brick. Yeah. Rob, see, if you'd have rung me as a joiner, you should have put a nice three by one curtain batten up. Yeah, you know what I mean, and just fix your uh, IKEA <laughs> rubbish to it. <laughs> well, the, Professional joiner. Well, now I just tell people to do that. Yeah, <laughs> tell people what to do. <laughs> yeah, drill that, move that, fix it there. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be back to work soon. So yeah, right. Cheers, Dean. I reckon Thanks you ought to shave it, Dean. I don't know. You know, I'm quite enjoying having having. I'm just getting a bit of a comb over at the minute. Well, anyway. I thought that was I thought Look that was that. happening with me. Yeah, no, it looks well, good. It looks good. It looks good. It's like going back to the it's like going back like going back to the eighties. It's like a bit of a side parting, a bit of a Stuart Pierce going on. Yeah. In Nottingham, they used to call them shadies. 
Shady. <laughs> shady. Try and get yeah. the old shady back. Yeah. We'd like to have that, that Joe's there, wouldn't we? Both of yeah. us. For that. Yeah, I'd do it better than that, though. <laughs> he's done it himself, I think. I think, I think his daughter's. I think his daughter's done it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Look at that. <laughs> no, it looks superb. Yeah. So, looks but superb. hopefully, we'll be back on the bank soon. Let's just hope uh, Bor big bad Boris gives us the green light, and we can all go out and enjoy. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So I think I'll be uh, going out. I think I'll, I fancy going to a big res and catching some bream in the day, and then maybe settling down, and maybe even going doing a bit of night fishing for a carp. Really? Yeah, maybe try and kill two birds with one stone. Because I'm looking at... A Sally okay, my, that, or is it? Well, well, no, this is the problem. I think she my don't time, know yet. She <laughs> don't know. But I think my time's going to be limited still because obviously she's at work and we don't want to put the kids into childcare. Okay. Yeah, so, you, so you're just limited to a 24-hour session? <laughs> so, no. So obviously I'm, only going to get, I'm only going to get one or d one day a week opportunity to go. So I'm going to make the most of it when I can. Is this why you won't... So, so you're going to go feeder fishing in the day and carp fishing at night. Is that why yes. you had Rob Hughes on here as well? Yeah, yeah Rob Hughes has sorted of... me out, yeah. I was going to say, he's trying to get in both teams now. <laughs> <laughs> Say what, Dean, I need some muscles to get in that carp team, don't you? <laughs> See the lads. I can't see you spotting it 170 yards. <laughs> no, they're all like He-Man. Don't fancy yeah. that. No, we'll skim past that one. Yeah, don't fancy that. Right, cheers, Dean. Thank you very much, Dean. Take care, lads. Oh, hang on. No, we'll, we'll just quick whack a plug in there. Dean Barlow, feeder links. Get yes. a plug in, Dean, quick, while oh, you're on there. I make feeder links. <laughs> <laughs> if you like feed links... Where can they buy them? Where can they buy them? Uh, just look at, look, type in uh, Facebook feeder links and uh, you'll see a picture. And then if you want to order any feed links, just send me a private message. Brilliant. Okay. Nice plug. Brilliant. Well, well done, guys. Cheers, Gaffer. See you later. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> <See you later. laughs> uh, Bye-bye.